Good afternoon, this is Nicholas from Gandora Gaming, and I bring you all my top 10 archetypes that need support by 2023. Now, personally, to be frank, this is a very opinionated list. There's about 100 archetypes Konami has either just forgotten about or haven't received their support in the last five years that Konami definitely, desperately needs to get some new support for. But uh, this is just my personal 10. These are the ones I want. And uh, let's just go straight into this. No uh, honorable mentions. You can leave all those in the comments. I left a lot of decks out. But these are just 10 decks that came to the top of my head. I was like, you know what? It'd be really cool if these cards got either retrains or just new support in general to make them actually playable archetypes or just gave them a win condition. You know, sometimes Yu-Gi-Oh! prints out archetypes that are so old that they don't have a strategy. They have a vague idea how they play but they don't do anything. And I left a lot of archetypes off because there's probably like at least 20 archetypes I can name that literally have no purpose. There's no win condition. It just, their monsters exist. They have no synergy with each other. And that's it. So purposely for this list, I chose archetypes that have at least somewhat of a game plan or at least some cohesion with the card archetypes or the cards in the archetype. And then go off there. And I'll also be providing my own solutions to fix these decks. Or how Konami can make them better. So let's just go straight into this. Alright, so for number 10 we have Cosmos. Now Cosmos is probably one of my favorite decks of all time. When it comes to artwork and aesthetic. It's Wizard of Oz and Star Wars together in a Yu-Gi-Oh! archetype. This is cool as shit. And Konami made some really cool art. And then never again. And I kind of feel a little sad on that. Cosmos, to my knowledge, aren't like underneath copyright issues. Like, yes, they're completely ripping off uh, Star Wars and Wizard of Oz. Which, now that Disney owns Star Wars, maybe that's the reason why we haven't gotten support. Which is kind of like Demogorgon and Dead by Daylight. Where it just won't give that character any new things or update him at all. Because Konami owns him. <laughs> So, honestly, the only way I would say fix this deck is just give us some new pilots. Uh, the problem with Cosmos is that they're kind of bricky. Uh, their boss monsters get special summoned through their pilots. Uh, the boss monsters are machine monsters and the pilots are psychics. So, the whole gimmick of the deck is that you summon out your psychics and they quick effect go into your uh, machines or your, pilot or your planes. And then the p spaceships are like unkillable, untargeting monsters that then float back into your pilots or smaller ships. It's a really, really cool strategy. And honestly, I just... There's like... There's so many ways you can do it about making this deck better. Make the pilots better. You can make the ships special summon themselves from hand if you control one. There's so many like really cool gimmicky things you can do for this archetype. Honestly, the only real reason I want to see this is because Star Wars has made so much new content since this archetype was released that i kind of just want to see new like how they do a spin on these characters did that make sense like i want to see an emperor palpatine uh psychic i want to see all the other characters that i love from star wars and i guess wizard of oz and let's see how they make them into some really cool combinations like for example uh oz the great and powerful wizard he doesn't have a card yet they can they can easily make Oz Emperor Palpatine and make a really cool psychic monster as a pilot. That'd be amazing. And as for ships, there's been plenty of new ships that we've got over the movies and shows in the last decade. So I would really love that Konami would uh, just be able to do this. Now, of course, they run into copyright issues. So that I feel like that's the real reason why Cosmos haven't got anything. But... They're just such a cool deck. They're psychics, they're machines, they're like big bugnesses that like the OTK and they quick effects summon themselves on your opponent's turn, which is my shit because I love decks that play on your opponent's turn by summoning themselves that aren't flunderies. So yeah, Konami, just give us some more uh, ships and that's about it. So now it's time to go over Cleeforts. Uh, Cleeforts is another archetype that... Uh, is dear to my heart. It's the skill drain pendulum deck. And uh, what do how do we make Cleeforts better? What support does Cleeforts need? Well, I think Link Era has definitely shined a light on this, but 
we ultimately need a new towers monster. That that that's how you're fixing Cleeforts. There's no other way about it. Cleeforts, as they work right now, do not work. The whole gimmick of the deck is that you summon out Apocryphor Towers, which is a three thousand attack monster that lowers all your opponent's monsters' attacks, and then also is unaffected by their opponent's cards. That he's the original Towers deck. And you can't say, oh, Towers is just too good. We can't make a new Towers. Because Konami prints out new Towers every year. Uh, for example, um, Agnisters, the Arrival Cybers, is just one big-ass Towers monster. Uh, Psychic and Punisher this year is a Towers monster. Konami is not afraid of making Towers monsters. They just need to make a new one for Cleeforts. Not to mention, I would love if Cleeforts got some actually good spells. So far, what all we have is the equip card Sacrifice, and that's it. That's all we have. Cleeforts, they have plenty of monsters. Scout's still an amazing card. Just give this deck, like, one or two new monsters that make the deck even more consistent. And give them a new Towers and some new spell cards. I would love to see where this archetype can go. Uh, the whole gimmick of this deck is that not only is it a towers deck, so tributing and get they get effects off to their tributes. So unlike monarchs or just like skill drain beats, this deck's whole gimmick is that when you tribute a cleave fort, they get it, it triggers effects. I would love it if they print out new cards that expand on this, like make it so that this deck tributes on your opponent's turn, but not your opponent's shit, but their shit, and they just get effects like that. I would be amazing. Now I know. Uh, the troll tributing mechanic is kind of dead, especially with the only good one being Flunderies. But there's so many ways to look at this archetype that you can expand on it and make it more better. Plus, it is a pendulum archetype. Give them an extra deck monster. I know the whole deck's gimmick is that you don't play the extra deck, they're just big towers in the main deck. But why not? Uh, we only have one link. That's it. That's the only extra deck monster Cleefords get. Give them more links. Give them XYZs. Give them. Anything on a synchro, F fuck it, give them a tutor. Just give them something. I just feel like if Amazonas are actually a better deck than Cleeforts, we've done something wrong. And Amazonas, no joke, are better than Cleeforts right now. Just because of that new wave of support. Which is saying a lot. And I love Cleeforts. One of the best pendulum decks of all time, in my opinion. Just for how much it has changed the game. Now, you could say it's changed it for worse, but hey, what can you do? All right, so now it's time for Christrons. Now, Christrons, I love Christrons. Christrons are my boys. They're the synchro spam archetype that plays on your opponent's turn. It's so fucking cool. How you fish Christrons? Give them a new Hog of Fire Rex that's not generic. Uh, give them new synchros that may play on your opponent's turn. Modernize some of the cards. Good God, give them spell cards. Jesus, this deck has no spells. And I, I get it, like, you know, Super Heavy Samurai have no spells, but come on. These are cleef. Uh, these, these aren't, like, the most meta shit in the world, yet they only have a trap card, and that's it. It's all monsters. This deck is playing literally cards like, uh, what's that fucking... It's playing, like, the worst cards ever in the deck. Like, fucking, uh, when you blow up a card, draw one. I'm trying to think with it. Supply Squad. This deck is playing Supply Squad. Why is it doing that? Give it some good in-archetype shit to allow it to be more consistent. Yes, make it better. I want this deck to be synchrofying multiple on your opponent's turn like fucking Hopcakes. You know how cool a mechanic that is? And you know how you make it not broken? You just make the shit non-generic. So you can only play in the Christrons. That's how you fix this shit. This is how we don't end up with another Hulk of Fiber X. And that's really it. That's how you fix Christrons. Congratulations. And that's really about it. Alright, let's go on to the next archetype. Alright, so now it's time to talk about Mecha Phantom Beast. So Mecha Phantom Beast, biggest issue, this deck doesn't know what it's doing. Uh, besides the Roradon being the most generic... Uh, bullshit we've ever seen when it comes to this link spamming. Um, this deck doesn't really understand if it wants to be a synchro spam deck with tokens or an XYZ focus deck. Honestly, I don't understand how this deck actually functions. We have like 30 different Mecha Phantom Beasts and only like 5 of them have ever been playable and they've always been on the most degenerate of strategies. Honestly, to make this deck 
You just kind of make this deck more cohesive. Give this deck a actual strategy. Either make it focus on synchro summoning or focus on XYZ summoning. There you go. That's up. Or link summoning because, you know, you do make tokens. Might as well go into that. And how do you fix the issue of not making this shit splashable in every deck? Make it exclusive to Mecha Phantom Beast. Or you just lock them into machines. And yes, that makes, oh, next machine strategy look crazy. Okay, fine. At least it will be lock them out instead of fucking tier elements that can play every fucking thing under the sun. That's my personal opinion. That's how you fix Mega Phantom Beast. I would love a new XYZ. I don't know what level it would be. Now we have two, Draco Sacks at level 7. I guess we can never level 7. But if you make it generic, it just costs shock loss support. As for synchros, I would love it to have some new synchros. But if you make them generic, you're just enabling other strategies. And if you make them bad, well, the, the word is where we're going with this. All right, so now it's time for Evil Swarms. Evil Swarms, love this archetype. Good God, Konami does give us some playable monsters and some spells. I think all the extra deck in this archetype is fantastic. You see all four of these cards? They're all been meta relevant in their time. Exo Knight is literally the first Zeus. Uh, the guy on the side right there is literally double Book of Moon. Uh, Ovion is a Floodgate. And, of course, the Trishula one is just pretty fantastic as well. Honestly, I think the extra deck is solid. Just give us like one new extra deck, dude. This is the modern one. And just give us some playable monsters. Holy shit. This is like worst Constellar, worst Satellar Knights. This is like the worst rank 4 strategy in my life. Because they can't even put a rank 4 onto the field while playing Goblin Squad. And even then, they're already, they can't even use Goblin Squad in like generic like rank 4 spam shit. Because they're locked into Evil Swarms as material. So give them better extension. Good God, just update the monsters. This is like, if, this is like if, uh, what's that fucking archetype called? They just got new bunches of crystals. This is just like if Crystal Beast had good, uh, extra deck monsters, but everything else in the archetype was ass. Like, they had no good spells. This archetype has great extra deck, but they have no spells besides, I think the one's like Fallen Down, or at least, no, I think Fallen Down's Arch Fiends, but... Just give this deck some love. Jesus. Alright, so now it's time to about Volcanics. Payne's favorite deck. How you fix Volcanics? Give this deck a direction. I can't tell if this deck's supposed to be a control deck, an explosive just blow up the board deck, or what? Just Or a burn deck. Just give this deck a fucking focus. If it's control deck, cool. Make it a, like, a control Bernie deck. Give it some like actual like trap cards as an archetype. If you're trying to make this like an actual playable uh pyro deck like make it a combo build give us a new uh volcanics and do some really really cool loops or just make it just something like launcher is a really really cool mechanic that you just shoot scatter shots and scoot the uh little dudes at you but the, the archetype doesn't do anything like cool scatter shot was great in like 2012 but let's face it guys this archetype as like a mediocre dark hole isn't enough nowadays. And I think the artwork for these guys are amazing. Like look at the fucking boss monster. This dude looks fantastic. You want to know how to make this deck like just chef's kiss? Alright, here's what you do. You make pyros playable. You give them good spells. You make them either a really cool combo flame deck. Or you make them a really cool control burn deck. I know it's like, how is Control Burn good? Well, or at least, like, interesting. You can do it, Konami. I believe in you. You made Labyrinths. Make Volcanics just like the new Labyrinth. Make them, like, like fill in the graveyard or something. I don't know. Just do something. All right, so now it's time to go over uh, Ally of Justice. And Ally of Justice is going to be a bitch to go over. So here's how you fix Ally of Justice. Keep the whole, their anti-light mechanic. Give them a layer of darkness. But for light monsters. Like make all monsters light. And then have all their monsters be floodgates for light. There you go. You fix ally justice. Now it's actually a cohesive strategy that works. Honestly I think that would be a really cool concept. That out there like. Because the whole idea of ally justice is that they're machines. That that hate light monsters. Because all because they're against the worms. Worms are all light monsters. And the ally justice are like. 
I believe dark machines or light machines. That's whole gimmicks that, that they hate against light monsters. So honestly, to fix Ally of Justice, give them a layer of darkness like card and make like new powerful light anti light cards, like an engine for anti light cards. And this deck can actually do some really cool stuff. Now, giving a deck a generic field spell that hates on light may not be the greatest thing in the world because that's literally layer of darkness and that's dark cards. But I feel like this ally justice would be a really cool mechanic that like they're machines that can't tell the difference. So instead of like there's something's wrong with their programming that they just see all archetypes as light monsters, even though they're not, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be a really cool mechanic. Maybe we can do some new lore. Say the ally of justice see the worms uh, everywhere now. I don't know. I think that's Cleefort's lore, but I don't really know. I'm just rambling at this point. Just give this deck some really cool cards. Make a new light field spell. That would be pretty amazing. And that's really about it. That's how you fix uh, Ally of Justice. And we'll go from there. Alright, so now it's time for Chemic Critters. I really don't know how to fucking fix this deck. This whole deck's gimmick is that it revolves around double summoning. That's the whole gimmick. It revolves around Catalyst Field. And all their monsters need to be summoned twice in order to get their effects. I don't know what Konami was on when they created this summoning mechanic. And I honestly don't know how they fix it besides retraining the entire idea of this mechanic. I really don't. Uh, this is the best. This is the archetype they created to make this ar uh, mechanic good. But personally, I just don't think making this, these type of monsters ever playable i just don't i don't know how konami can do it i really don't how, like unless you make the effect super broken or you give them the effect that they summon themselves or turn themselves a hand summon themselves again and then just get their effect which would just be weird like why would you i don't i don't know how to make this that good i really don't there's some really really beautiful art uh the whole idea of chemical critters is that like they're like chemical compounds that make up animals I mean, that's their whole gimmick. I, I really don't know the lore. Like, we have a crab here, and then we have, like, Cerberus, and, like, I don't know the hell the one you, with the horns is, uh, with the wings. I, I really don't know. It's a, it's our XYZ boss monster. This, I don't know how to fix. This is the one archetype I need you in the comments to tell me. How the fuck do you fix chemic critters? I don't know. Like, I just don't know. There's a, how you make double summoning good? Like, Geminis are just bad. How do you fix that? I really don't know. Now it's time to talk about Miss Valleys. This is a synchro looping archetype. Their field spells at one for a reason. Because any time any of the, like, actual cards for Miss Valley have ever been good, they've been, like, broken in, like, non-Miss Valley decks. For example, Thunderbird sees play in Flunderies. The Barry, oh, the Barry Satchel isn't a Miss Valley card, but, but the, uh, Apex Avion has been played in Pendulum decks, plus it was good in Leerless until the Samorglink got banned. Not to mention, the uh, there was a really, really bad loop with Union Carrier equipping the Thunderbird and the Little Thunderbird, so it's an infinite negate loop. There's some really, really like awful shit with fun when it comes to Miss Valleys. But honestly, they're just a synchro strategy that Konami has kind of just forgotten about. Um... Like the Lavals and all of them. They just give this deck some love. Like seriously. I really love a really cool synchro wind wing beast slash spellcaster slash fairy archetype. This whole archetype is like really, really cool. It has some really, really art cool artwork. But there's no good thing about it. And that's really about it. Now it's time to talk about worms. Uh, the first reptile deck. And Jesus, there is a lot to fix here. Same thing with Ally of Justice. Just give them a functioning mechanic. Either make this deck a actual like sub tier level flip archetype, or you just go heavily on the fusion mechanic and just make them like a really cool fusion worm strategy, which would be kind of cool because right when I think worms, I usually think synchros because of uh, the Tengis and the Sword Soul and the. What's it called? The Yang Zing? Those are all like synchro based strategies. So it'd be really cool if you made the worms fusion based strategies. That'd be really, really interesting because we already have a fusion in the, uh, the see there, the Worm King. or Well, the Worm King isn't a fusion, but the little spitball of dirt that's a form of a skull. That's a worm fusion and it's bad as fuck. But uh, 
I don't know. This I don't know how you fix worms. Either make the flip effects way better as a really cool flip control deck, or you make this like a really cool fusion mechanic. That's all I got. Hope you all enjoy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.